Hello, my name is Nigel Thorne. I'm from Wales and I have concerns about the Welsh Government's RSE code and guidance for schools. I'm also concerned about the Welsh Government's advice to schools regarding the benefits of the social affirmation of gender-confused children. It is clear that many of our young people have been influenced by queer theory, a praxis-driven philosophy that is taught in university gender studies departments, but like a viral contagion, has spread throughout the internet. Queer theory proponents believe that Western thought sees the world as a set of binaries that are innately hierarchical and therefore oppressive, with one pole of the binary oppressing the other. Queer theory aims to undermine social norms through the strategy of queering binaries, breaking down the distinctions between the poles of the binary so they merge into one. One of those binaries is the male-female gender binary. A major influence in queer theory is Judith Butler, who in her book Gender Trouble redefined the word gender as something that is performed rather than being a synonym for sex, with gender identity created as a result of that performance. Many people believe that undermining the gender binary is progressive because it undermines heteronormativity, the perception that to be normal, boys must be masculine and sexually attracted to girls, and girls must be feminine and sexually attracted to boys. Queer theory has turbocharged an ideological belief propagated by the lobby groups Stonewall, Gyres and others that all of us have a gender identity that is independent of our biological sex. Queer theorists are pushing queer theory and gender identity ideology in schools. It's a powerful force with influential and well-funded backers. An opposing force is the gender-critical movement. People with gender-critical views believe that this teaching is dangerous. It is a dogmatic belief with no scientific underpinning and it encourages vulnerable, non-gender-conforming young people to believe that they are actually trans, leading many of them to seek medical transition. People with gender-critical views point to the increase in numbers of young people referred to the JIDS clinic and they aim to remove from our schools the uncritical teaching of the belief that everyone has a gender identity that is independent of their biological sex and its queer theory intellectual underpinning. In a presentation for Merched Cymru, a grassroots group of ordinary women from across Wales, Stephanie Davis Arai from Transgender Trend shows some of the materials that children are exposed to online. What I thought I'd do today was actually show the culture from which this generation is coming to their RSE lessons and what they're learning online. And to do this, I think there are two issues. There are lots, but there are two issues that to me jump out in what children are being exposed to this generation this online generation. Um, one is porn and one is gender, and the other one is gender identity. So when I go through, I'm focusing on gender identity and how the what messages children are receiving and imbibing online and in life. And really to get a full picture, I'm going to focus on girls um, with boys. Some of it, what I'm showing you, it would be similar influence on boys, but there are different things online that influence boys as well. I'm focusing on girls just because the issues of sexual harassment and rape culture in schools is a really serious and scandalous issue affecting girls. Um, so, but to really imagine this generation's world that they're living in, you have to imagine that this slideshow also presents the most horrific, degrading images of women being abused in porn, because that's the other side of this story. And what, and I think the two areas are very linked in why so many girls are rejecting um, becoming women, and uh, particularly at puberty, and that this is unprecedented, the number of, um, or the fact that girls are uh, developing gender dysphoria 
during or you know at the beginning of puberty. So to start, right? Okay, just to very briefly to start that over the last decade, because things have changed so much, there's such a huge, a massive increase in the number of adolescents and particularly girls who are presenting at gender clinics is the change of con in concept of being transgender and the language. So in the past, we would talk of the gender dysphoric child, normally male, normally before puberty, and we would understand that it was part of a de developmental process, that there were many outcomes in adulthood, um, most likely uh, gay or lesbian identity, um, uh, but heterosexual with a resolution of that gender dysphoria or cross-sex identity. So it's a transsexual was a potential outcome and the least likely one. Um, that's now changed. We now call these children transgender children, and we understand it, or it has been promoted as uh, an innate condi condition that children are born with and that children have an innate <coughs> gender identity. So this is a slide from GIAS, the Gender Identity Research and Education Society. And this is from a document. It's the first on, at sort of school's anti-William document that I know of. It was published by the Home Office in 2008 and then a second version in 2010. And this is the idea that in the womb, uh, you have an idea or an inner sense of being a boy or a girl uh, right from the start, even though uh, gender is seen as a social construct, it's somehow also there um, before birth, before you, you have any social understanding. So that's the idea that this is based on. And now let's look at what children are seeing online. I'm going to go through this as quickly as I, as I, as I can, because I want you to feel bombarded with this just as teenagers are. So looking online, all the resources that teenagers can, can get hold of, and when I say teenagers, it's younger than that, actually. It's, uh, you can get a gender identity workbook for teens with practical exercise to navigate your exploration. And as I go through, I'm going to just briefly say what the message is that children are getting. So your gender is something that you explore. It's a journey and it's a celebration. It's a celebration of who you really are. You can get your gender quest workbook, and this is a way of learning to express yourself, navigate on your journey. It's a, again, it's an exploration, and you can get your gender journey journal where you can write every day. And, and some of these exercises within these journals include uh, images such as the river with bends in it, and at every bend in the river, you can. Um, decide you have a moment of, of do you turn or you and every part of children's behavior they are encouraged to interpret through the lens of gender does this behavior does this interest um make me a girl or a boy so this is a, a new task for this generation that no other generation has had to do to find out themselves if they are a boy or a girl you can do a gender identity test, 90% 90, 90 accurate quiz here. So this quiz tells children that governments um, uh, dictate and impose uh, gender at birth um, and, of course, sometimes make mistakes, as parents do, that whether you're born male or female is irrelevant, that you, you could be a girl or a boy despite your biological sex, uh, you can get a trans self-care workbook. So you need to really, um, um, being trans, you need to, you need to have self-care, you need to look after yourself, you can get a certificate of transness in this book. Um, and this introduces us to the idea of cisgender. Uh, it says, or, or, or one of the, the messages I think this is coming from an adult activist movement this certificate verifies that name is trans enough to identify as whatever, and anyone who says otherwise can go eat rocks. So this is one of the key messages that nobody else has the right to question you, only you know who you are. Here we have the Trans Teen Survival Guide, which I think the graphics of this show 
the message that this is edgy and this is cool. Um, and this is a really, um, this is a, a, a cool subculture to belong to. And it introduces the idea that you need to survive it. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's a journey. It may be a difficult journey and you need to survive. In this book, there is the trans umbrella and we have the concept of cisgender coming in again here very graphically and symbolically that if you can read it, the cis uh, raindrops are falling on the trans parade. So the trans umbrella includes um, non-binary, gender queer, gender fluid, by gender, pan gender, agender, all of these different gender identities, and these horrible cis people, boring cis people, are raining on our parade. Um, this is from Twitter. This is part of the young teaching the young. Things I didn't know were dysphoria. And this is another message from adult activists that any condition means that you're trans. So it could be depression, anxiety, could be eating disorders, it could be autism. All of these issues may be indication that you're trans. Um, and this, this message is reflected here by this young person. I didn't know, things I didn't know were dysphoria, feeling desperately sad and uncomfortable when I had to dress fancy or sexy, which is a pretty common thing in adolescence. Uh, eating disorders, um, maybe if I was skinny and my body would curve in a better place. So again, it's something that's very common amongst teenage girls in particular, but now they're being encouraged to conceptualise these feelings as an indication that they're trans. And this one makes me laugh. Uh, just loathing my, my, my hearing my voice in recordings, which, you know, I never listen back. I think <laughs> I think most people would probably have that, um, w w would agree with that. Um, this is just an example because where this message that you're special, this is your authentic self, this is who you really are, this is your inner identity, um, where, you know, this wouldn't matter if we were talking about goths or emos or any other sort of identity during adolescence. But this particular one, the inevitable pathway leads to medicalization. And this is just an example of the thousands of YouTube videos online, mostly from uh, young women um, who are documenting their trans journey and the journey is going into medical intervention. Um, and so they document the passage of taking testosterone, the change in their voice, bit, in the beard. And of course, when you're doing a, a, a video, you need to keep the narrative going. These videos have hundreds of thousands of teenage girl followers. Um, but you need to keep your fan base by constantly driving the narrative, which, you know, to me, is really worrying because when you inevitably get to the double mastectomy and the uh, double, showing off the double mastectomy scars. So that's just one example, my one year on testosterone transition video. Um, and these videos really glamorise. I mean, the world that our children live in, there are influencers um, and YouTube stars. They're very, very well known. And a lot of these transitioners are very well known um, online. And again, it's the girls watching these videos see these people as experts. Now, I don't want to put exploitative pictures up. I'm using this one, I'll move on quickly. Um, just to show, this This is um, Pink News doing a project um, with Snapchat, um, Pure Trans Joy. And this is, this is from a girls' school, and um, part of the glamorization of gender identity is everybody has their different flag. But note on this chart who has the flag with grey stripes, uh, this, the boring cisgender child, and which adolescent would admit to being the boring cisgender child. Um, and this is the genderbred person which is used in schools which describes sex as a quality of maleness or female, femaleness. So not a biological material reality. This message is going to younger children. Uh, the message is that if you have um, likes or interests more associated with the opposite sex, then you really are the opposite sex. And there's a selection of books for early years and primary years and a book for schools which tells 
which is the first book to teach children about medical transition, and it's aimed at seven-year-olds upwards. Um, and this is going out into the wider world. This is the Science Museum, which shows that you can have a prosthetic penis if you're a girl and you identify as a boy. Um, and I finished with just that slide to show this is really an illustration of the wider culture that our children are being brought up in. So I think for the RSE curriculum, we need to ask the question, do we reinforce these messages that children are learning online? Is it, is it helpful or is it harmful to children to understand themselves through the lens of gender identity? Does it, is it good for children's mental health to be constantly examining and analysing their personalities in terms of gender? Or is it causing mental health problems? And do we, how do we help children uh, manage all of these messages they are bombarded with on online, in school, in wider society? How do we help them critically examine and analyse the materials that they're seeing? The Welsh Government's RSE code and supporting material has been developed by Professor Emma Reynolds, an academic from Cardiff University. Professor Reynolds is a huge enthusiast for queer theory. In a paper entitled Girls, Boys and Junior Sexualities, Exploring Children's Gender and Sexual Relations in the Primary School, published in 2007, Professor Reynolds quotes academic Richard Johnson. Queer theory is linked to forms of politics which deliberately seek to break down the fixed boundaries between the hetero, homo, gender and other binaries to multiply sexual categories and ultimately dissolve them. Queer theory is a political movement that has had a massive influence on the development of the RSE code and supporting material. Agenda is an online resource created for secondary school pupils by Professor Reynolds. Agenda has been approved by Cardiff University, the NSPCC, the former Children's Commissioner for Wales, Welsh Women's Aid and the Welsh Government. It has also been recommended for use in schools by Estin. Within the Agenda resource, children are encouraged to reflect on their gender and to get beyond the binary. As Professor Reynolds explains, Agenda is available for use for all schools in Wales. And over the last three years, we've been sharing this creative praxis in an innovative professional learning programme for teachers in Wales who are preparing for the new statutory relationships and sexuality education curriculum, a curriculum which I continue to have the privilege to inform and shape. In her work with children, Reynolds has encouraged children to question their gender. That's supporting us for who we want to become regardless of our gender. Start respecting everyone's unique talent and start supporting equality and happiness. Stand down our nominees. Start making peace in the world. Listen to us while we're singing right now. In Reynolds' 2007 paper, there is a section headed Queering Childhood, Schooling Sexualities. Within this section, Reynolds writes, Queering Childhood involves not just queering sex and gender and sexual binary oppositions such as male masculinity, female femininity and heterosexual homosexual, but also the generational binaries, adult-child and sexual-asexual. More specifically then, queering childhood pushes us to identify and think otherwise about, and thus trouble, the heterogendered and heterosexualized nature of identity categories, such as girl, boy and child. Despite widespread concerns, the Welsh Government are intent on pushing queer theory and gender identity ideology into schools and wider society. In their recently published LGBTQ Plus Action Plan, the Government push 
gender identity ideology. In line with queer theory teaching, the Welsh Government have redefined the word sex and gender. So gender is no longer a synonym for sex, as defined in the Oxford English Dictionary, but a term for how someone identifies. This redefinition of the word then allows the government to make the claim that trans women are women, trans men are men, and non-binary identities are valid. In the action plan, it is claimed that there is evidence that it indicates the positive impact of pre-pubertal social transition. Research on socially transitioned trans children has shown positive mental health and well-being outcomes. This claim is in stark contrast to the findings of Dr Hilary Cass. In the interim Cass report, it states, However, it is important to view social transition as an active intervention because it may have significant effects on the child or young person in terms of their psychological functioning. Queer theory idolises those who transgress boundaries, so children struggling with gender issues are idolised and socially affirmed, rather than their distress being regarded as a mental health issue. Indeed, the government seems to be proposing that those who dare to propose an alternative explanation to a child's gender distress other than they have been imbued with a gender identity that doesn't match their body, is at risk of being accused of practising conversion therapy. Dennis Kavanagh from the Gay Men's Network has a different take. Dennis, you will have to help clarify this to me, because when people think of conversion therapy, they think of gay men being wired up to electrodes, yeah. some doctor sort of trying to forcibly change their sexual orientation. And trans people are, are saying, well, we want a similar uh, ban, which is what the government has agreed to. Um, how is it any different? Um, it's, it's completely different because um, what these conversion therapy bans so-called do around the planet I is this. They say to any doctors, such as those practising at the Tavistock, the UK's premier gender clinic that had to be closed because it was, quote, not safe. They say to those doctors, if you talk to a child about their gender identity, their sense of whether they're a boy or a girl, and you do anything other than accept that child's self-diagnosis, then you're guilty of conversion Therapy, And what that means is that a doctor who's dealing with a child, many of these children are autistic, or they looked after children, many of them grow up to be gay. If a doctor does their job, they're made a criminal by these bans. So in other words, uh, any kind of explorative therapy, you know, some, a child yeah. comes along and says, I think I'm in the wrong body, you're suggesting that the doctor would have to affirm that unquestioningly, yeah. even though they're... They might be gay, might be autistic, all those other things that are happening. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this is driven by extremist child sex change charities um, like Mermaids, who've had a malign influence at the Tavistock. Uh, as far back as 2018, Dr David Bell wrote that the, the clinic was dealing with homophobic parents. It was dealing with children who were dealing with internalised homophobia, their own sense of discomfort at being gay. And the, and the staff there were placating charities like mermaids. Um, so what these sorts of bills do, they're Orwellian, really. They say they prevent conversion therapy, but they fuel the problem they claim to solve, and they create gay conversion by gender. And that's what's going on with these bills. In the action plan, Hannah Bluthin makes a statement. During a visit to meet with the Digon group from Ascol Plasmar in Cardiff, I asked the students what message they would want us to share in a statement to mark Pride 2022. The message was clear. I don't just want to be tolerated. I want to be celebrated. Ms. Bluthin seems to completely ignore the evidence that children from Digon group from Ascol Plasmar are being influenced for political purposes. Other people have different views from the Welsh Government about the influence of queer theory. Um, hello folks, uh, this is um, Jester Extra. It's a dull, miserable looking day. Um, okay, so let's just go through this, alright? 
It's an article from The Telegraph, and it comes off of the back of the release of a new book called Time to Think, um, which was, gosh, it was overdue, but I'm so glad it's here now. I put the link to the book in the, in the comments section below, not comments, description section below, um, but I'm going to take us through this article uh, in the hope that those that haven't read it will perhaps just listen to what I'm saying and that maybe what this article implies could in some way get people to understand that we need to do the, undo the damage that has been done by ideologues and the ideologically deranged to some of the most vulnerable people in our society and to gay, lesbian and autistic children. So I'll begin. It's written by Gordon Rayner, Associate Editor at The Telegraph. It's entitled The Tavistock Clinic Ignored Link Between Autism and Transgender Children. The Tavistock Clinic ignored evidence that 97.5% of children seeking sex changes had autism, depression or other problems that might have explained their unhappiness, a new book claims. Staff at the NHS facility were so determined to push a pro-transgender policy that children who might not have been trans were treated as collateral damage by clinicians who labelled doubters transphobic, a whistleblower has said. Children that might not have been trans were treated as collateral damage. That's all of them. This trans nonsense has to end. There is no such thing as a trans child. That's it. It's, it's just pure evil. 97.5% had, had autism. They were treated as collateral damage. Now, this is a whistleblower that's saying this. The book was written by an individual. It's going to need looking at, but I bet your bottom dollar that the lawyers had a very close look at this before they let it get out. Seven. You know, I knew about this. Lots of you know about this. But to see it written down so starkly is utterly devastating. Seven in ten children had more than five associated features, such as abuse, anxiety, eating disorders or bullying. And a social worker estimated that as few as one in 50 children treated at the clinic would have stayed transgender for life if they had not been given controversial drug therapy. Okay. And 80% of them were same-sex attracted. That's me, by the way. One clinical psychologist who worked at the Tavistock was horrified at the possibility that highly vulnerable children were wrongly being given irreversible drug treatments following referral by the Tavistock but discussion of the subject was shut down by colleagues, she said. Stonewall, the LGBT Foundation, Mermaids, GLAD, the LGBT Consortium, every pride in the country, this needs to be investigated by the police. It is negligence, professional negligence, organisational negligence, it is negligence on a scale so vast that only, only, the bringing of criminal charges will allow society to mend. The claims were made in Time to Think, the inside story of the collapse of the Tavistock's gendered service for children by Hannah Barnes, a BBC Newsnight journalist, which is published on February the 23rd. <laughs> Hannah, you know, I remember you've done work on this for a long time now. You've been absolutely tenacious, absolutely tenacious. 
And we've had previous, we've had reviews of the book. We've had reviews of what's going on in the book, and they are universally glowing in terms of its precision, forensic analysis, and explanation in a way that people are going to be able to understand of exactly how, in 2023, we collectively, as the UK, allowed the medical experimentation of children on children to go on under our very noses. The book, which is based on more than 100 hours of interviews with clinicians and patients, paints a picture of a clinic that became overwhelmed by demand and came under the increasing influence of transgender charities. Children as young as 10 were referred to specialists with a view to them being prescribed puberty blocking drugs and others were referred after as little as 20 minutes consultation. How do you deal with such a collective failure as a nation? And how do we mend? How do you deal with such a collective failure? You know, people have been calling and saying this is wrong for years, including me. Including me. But what was it about our society that allowed this to happen? What was it? What made us fall so easily for ideological derangements of this kind and we continue to do so? What stopped us? What actually made this happen? How did this happen? It is absolutely right that we now see that this needs to be halted on every level, but how did we as a country allow this to happen? Allow it to escape the bonds and boundaries of academia and become an ideological cult that has damaged so many people. Those parents who would prefer that their child's childhood was not queered may wish to support Public Child Protection Wales. Links are included below.